Hi friends, I wanted to do a uh, video on the Arc Crystal since uh, some new information had come up while I was uh, browsing the web, <coughs> checking back on this uh, on these guys. Basically, you know the Arc Crystal, and we'll go over the website available for order now. I think they're like twelve hundred bucks. So. It's a precisely cut uh, quartz crystal uh, cut along the axis of molecular lattices, and because uh, the, the the molecular structure is all tetrahedral, so they make a fractal you know shape of that. Uh, but the new thing here is the saddle. Now, when I uh, met Mark Hines and uh, held this crystal he told me that they took this crystal which had developed into a full battery about 200 crystals to make a battery like a car battery like a 12 volt car battery um, and he brought it to uh, Raytheon where uh, they, he said that he almost didn't make it out of there alive and without this without this technology um, few days later he had money seized from his bank account and put on the terrorist watch list and no-fly list I think you know, since he's been taken off of those but uh, I do believe they did at that time make an agreement that this was not going to be a battery and that they were not going to market it as such instead it's marketed as some uh, healing crystal or some such well <clears throat> I uh, was wondering, okay, well, cool, they're just going to sell it as something else. But they actually changed it so that it is in a battery. Um, the, the concept is, is that it's shaped as the you know geometry and frequency are the same thing. Cymatics, right? Look it up if you don't know that. C-Y-M-A-T-I-C-S. Or chymatics, as the Russians say. Now... Uh, this tetrahedron is made at the shape, which is the frequency of the uh, Earth's Schumann resonance. So as long as it's in the Earth's resonance, it's always going to be uh, resonating. Okay? Now... When you have a frequency in a conductor, you have voltage. I mean, that's just pure electrical engineering right there. When I think it's the formula is one hertz in a, over the surface of a specific length of conductor is, uh, or maybe it's any conductor, is uh, one volt. So each one of these puts out about, I think it says 8.75. Uh, 8 volts on the patent I didn't say volts it's just the, it's the size which is the frequency which is also the resonance of the planet um, so uh, what's the change here now it says the saddle assembly that protects the crystal from damage has been crafted from CP4 grade titanium and represents a marvel of engineering Blah, blah, blah. Not only does it provide protection by floating the crystal inside a titanium structure with a system of silicone bumpers, a sophisticated system of magnets allow the saddle to be joined to other saddles to create precise tetrahedron-based geometries, or to be magnetically secured to accessories such as titanium pendant, which is included in your purchase. Now, the only change that I've seen are these silicon bumpers. Now, if this cage is producing voltage from the vibration of this crystal, well, these silicon bumpers will insulate that vibration. It'll, it'll insulate so that no vibration reaches the cage. Therefore, you have no voltage. So I was wondering how they got around it. 
um, and they basically changed it to, you know, really did change it to a healing crystal and not a battery, uh, which I'm sure they were sternly warned not to do so, especially after Mark's meeting with Raytheon. Uh, Nassim was smart enough not to go to that one. <clears throat> but uh, I think that's where all their trouble started with these technologies, which is a while ago. Um, now, uh, these things are being sold at like 1200 bucks a piece, and it doesn't even do what it was originally designed to do, um, in which they, what they do is, in the gravity drive here, or what are they calling it now, harmonic flux resonator, <laughs> they actually, uh, put these crystals inside here, inside this, uh, this area, and, uh, and I think that it shows it on the, one of the patents, um, the little tetrahedron stacked up in there, and it actually, you know, gets it going, like spinning your finger around in the water, and you get the little vortex running, um, and then it, it's able to couple to the Earth's frequency once it gets up to resonance, um, and, uh, it says, that's what they, they say here. I wasn't even sure they were going to even say that, but apparently it's on here. Uh, so, when you look at the patent, okay, these bumpers are not on there. Okay, they, it doesn't talk anything about the cages or the bumpers. It's just purely a crystal. So, it would be easy to... Uh, Put these little bumpers in without anybody really noticing and oh it's crystal so of course we have to uh we got to uh you know keep it from it, it breaking and all that which you know sounds reasonable but when you put these uh these bumpers on there the resonance can't reach the, the metal cage here and uh, or at least dampens it quite a bit so that even if you were to be able to afford 200 of these crystals which is the other deterrent there uh, to making the battery it these little bumpers here are, are still going to insulate uh, or dampen any of the oscillation reaching the actual cage so that no voltage is going to be produced so, again, I'm going to say this because I don't think that they can or, or are willing to at this point. Um, that you got to take these bumpers out. Okay, if you, I would recommend just building the whole thing yourself from the, your own lab-grown quartz and the whole thing. Uh, from he, the Sim says, oh, it took 25 years to get this made. Now, I understand you have to cut it along the molecular lines and everything like that, and that can get pretty difficult. I do understand that. But 25 years, you have to you have to think there, there's some other things going on there. Uh, especially when, you know, the person who was funding the sim originally told me personally that this was a battery. A free energy crystal battery that never runs out of electricity because it's running off of the frequency, the wireless frequency of the Earth. Okay? And the shape is the antenna. And crystal is definitely a perfect medium for frequency vibration, i.e. crystal radios. So, I just wanted to put that little tidbit out there for anybody who is interested in this crystal and uh, wanting to know, or if they had heard about the battery part of it, um, know what was going on. Uh, I was surprised that they had even released this at all. Um, from what Mark was saying, it, they, they weren't going to. Um, but I guess they had found some ways around it. Of course, maybe that's what took the extra years, was to figure out how to still release the technology without getting killed 
so, yeah, uh, and all we know is that uh, these, these, uh, the people that they were dealing with were definitely dangerous, the military industrial complex. Um, and uh, not to mention all the other people, which, you know, we might go into at a later date. Now, when we see things like this being done, we have to know that the people that are doing are doing this are doing this because they're scared, <laughs> you know, because they're they've been warned. They're obviously afraid. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't have these little bumpers on here. Um, now. I think it's still good that they were at least able to release it, but <laughs> I am pretty disappointed that they did make it so expensive. Um, Twelve hundred dollars there, and if you need two hundred to make a full battery, like a car battery that never runs out of uh, electricity, you're gonna have to be really rich. <laughs> to be able to uh, to afford a full battery. Um, so at this point, this is just pretty much kind of a gimmick. I think it's a, a rude uh, spit in the face to all of the people that had been supporting Nassim and uh, and his projects um, to to get you know short selled like this. I, I mean, it's not, it doesn't even work as a battery, but they're selling it for 1200 bucks. Wow, because Nassim is selling it. <laughs> I just think it, it's a giant ripoff. It's, it doesn't do what it was originally designed to do. And, uh, yeah, I think it's, it, it's a pretty shady thing to tell everybody all the investors that this is a crystal battery and then release it where it doesn't even work as a crystal battery even if you bought it for 1200 bucks so just gonna have to say not very impressed with uh, where they uh, were going with this and of course they you know, have all these patents where they went ahead and changed <laughs> what it, you know what was going on with it and of course they had to pull all these uh, these uh, patents uh, before they were reviewed and re uh, re uh, refile them so it's a Faraday shield uh, they're calling it a Faraday shield that's what that's what the modular frames. That's what they're calling it. What does a Faraday cage do? It absorbs electricity. It absorbs electromagnetic radiation. Now, <clears throat> in this patent, patent, uh, it doesn't talk about the uh, silicon bumpers. You know why? Because they weren't originally going to be in there. They and uh, this is the November fourteenth, two thousand twelve patent here on Justia. Uh, they they were going to release it as a free energy crystal battery until right around two thousand twelve, when Mark took this uh, battery to Raytheon to try to get funding for it. Uh, yeah, which that's the other problem. These guys will go to anybody for funding. And then you get into mix up like this. So they added these silicone bumpers so that it won't do what it was originally designed to do. And they're still selling it at 1200 bucks. Now I get it. You know, you got to make money. This is capitalist environment. And, you know, Nassim's got his name behind it. And everybody's going to pay this much. But I wanted to let you all know what the gimmick was. And, uh,. You know, find a way to to take out these bumpers. Um, find a way to make your own cage. You know, use the crystal, and then form your own cages, and and uh, uh, produce the battery. 
Um, well, I guess until I can either make my own crystal or afford the $1,200 and start getting in here and, and uh, taking measurements and stuff, I, I recommend that somebody does and uh, go ahead and, and release the video and show the, the voltage coming off of the cage. So anyways, uh, just want to keep this short. And uh, again, here I am bringing you the secrets to technologies that uh, are emerging or trying to emerge. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you got lots of these people wrapped up in contracts and, you know, funding. And, you know, once you get oil money involved into free energy projects, well, any investor is going to say, well, this is going to erase the source of my money. So <laughs> things are going to get a little clouded along the way. Um, that's why I don't sign any contracts or agree to any of this, uh, this type of capitalistic approach to technologies that affect or can affect uh, the population um, in our society. And it's up to us to become educated and decide what we want to do with our society. Oh, that's me, signing off.